you trying to vlog, it take like 40 minutes to leave a crib, man. You gotta do stuff over and over and make the joint look good. Just try and make it interesting, man. Just try and make it interesting. I'm a little sad, man, because I had that perfect car mount set up for the vlog, but I finally shipped off the giveaway winner stuff, so I'm gonna have to order another car mount. This vlog gonna be a lot more laid back, I guess, if this even comes out. I've been doing a lot of vlogging that just has not mounted to anything, but <laughs> I got some stuff I wanna talk about. I was gonna go to Best Buy and buy one of the new GoPros I don't know why I never upgrade my GoPro, but the new one has like this super wide field of view and I thought that that would actually be really good for some of the photography content I wanna bring to the channel sometime soon. Y'all know I got the X100V, I've been taking a lot of photos on that and it's just been making me enjoy taking photos. So I've been wanting to kinda film some of my, I guess, photo walks, but I was like, do I need this? I definitely didn't need it, and I don't even think that it was gonna achieve the look that I was going for. I'm BSing. I'm gonna just go take some photos today for the hell of it and make a video out of it, out of it, and whatever comes out of it, comes out of it. I realize that some of the people here on the channel aren't here for that, but honestly, YouTube, right now in this current state, I personally feel is not about trying to appease the current subscribers you have because the majority of the views that you get from YouTube are from the browse feature anyway, so. It really don't matter. I just need to make what I want to make. And if y'all rock with it, that's incredible. If you don't, just check out the next video. But YouTube on its own will find an audience for that sort of content. I enjoy taking pictures. I don't want to suppress any parts of myself that I enjoy doing. So I'm going to go take photos. It is what it is. And I say all of this because it's going to be a shift in content over the next couple of months. Because like I said, I don't want to shoot music videos. I just am not inspired to shoot music videos. I'm not watching a lot of music video content. So I'm gonna figure out ways to tell compelling stories about what I have going on in my life at the current moment. I wanna give y'all tips on how y'all can build your business, social media presence and stuff like that. And I also wanna keep some creativity flowing with photography. Videos still will be in there. I will do music videos if the opportunity arises. I have a trip to LA at the end of the month, which I think I will actually film a music video out there, ironically, but usually in Virginia around this time, it's freezing cold. I'm not inspired to go out and create any music videos. So this year, as I tell myself every year, I'm actually gonna take the season off of shooting music videos. I'm gonna go do some other stuff and I'll have new experiences and new things to talk about from that. Instagram, post a story, get some questions in. I think I want to throw a Q and A to this. I haven't done a Q and A in a long time. I actually told some people on Twitter to ask me some questions a couple weeks ago, but I never followed through. So I'm gonna make sure I answer those questions as well. But if you don't follow me, follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I'm not active. I'm not gonna lie to you and say that you're gonna get a lit feed, but follow me because you get updated on stuff. I do sales every now and then on gear, heavily discounted and you could be a part of Q and A's like this one right here. So I gotta download Instagram though. I don't even keep Instagram on my phone. I don't like the platform. It wastes my time. So that's just me. How y'all feel about Instagram? Y'all keep Instagram on y'all phone? Y'all heavy Instagram? Right? Y'all doing reels? What y'all doing? Let me know. I'm always caught in between wanting to be more active on social media and also wanting to live my life. So I tend to like. <laughs> not have it on my phone. I just have to log in again. Yo, I think I'm gonna film a Q&A today. So do me a question. Do me a question. What the hell am I talking about? <laughs> Yo, I think I'm gonna film a Q&A today. So do me a favor. Ask me any question below. If it's lit enough, I'll answer it in my upcoming YouTube video. That's it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter though. I want to get more active on Twitter. Instagram, maybe not so much, but go ahead and follow me. step with business and life is 
I would say expansion. With my content and with my business, I want to eventually venture off into a little bit more of the tech space. I think filmmaking is cool, but filmmaking moves kind of slow. It's not always a new camera to talk about. It's not always new filmmaking gear to talk about. But with tech, tech moves pretty fast. So if I can kind of integrate some of that into my workflow and do a little bit more personal stuff as well, I want to do a little bit more relationship building with the audience. Kind of similar to what I used to have. I feel like my content right now is very topic focused. So if you clicked on my video and you didn't know me, you would get the information really fast. And I think that that's cool, but I wanna, you know, keep the relationship between me and the audience so it's not like a robot just feeding you information. With life, I want to get some sound investments for myself. I make a decent amount of money right now. I just need to invest that money so it can make money on its own. That way, when it's time for this to be over with, I'll be straight. Bro, I am sorry. If anybody has gotten scammed by anyone on Telegram, that's not me. Pay attention to who's commenting in my comment section. Click on the profile. Make sure it has subscribers. Make sure you're actually talking to me. I know a lot of people who have went to Telegram and have talked to somebody who claimed that it was me. And not just me, like this is pretty relevant on the whole YouTube platform. So don't get scammed on Telegram. I'm not on Telegram doing any giveaways and more than likely whatever YouTuber you're watching is not on Telegram. I think the fastest way to get better as a producer and a director is to get a team. You can't do everything by yourself. When you're working by yourself, you're racing against time because you gotta do the little stuff. You gotta move the lights. You gotta go back to the camera, check the viewfinder, do all these different things. Get you someone who will help you on set. Get you someone who knows a little bit about lighting, even get you an editor. These things are gonna make you a better music video producer and a director, man. Just teamwork. You can't do it all by yourself. I realized that if I'm at a low moment where I'm not really feeling like myself, more than likely I've gotten off track with my routine. Maybe it's me eating a little bit crappier than I should. Maybe it's me not getting enough sleep. Maybe it's me not going to the gym. Maybe I'm just not trying to apply myself creatively. And in these moments, I really just try to get back on track. I think breaks do me really well personally. I don't really force it. I'm not the guy who's gonna go force and make something. If I need a break, I'm gonna take the break, bro. So that's me. I also just sit and kind of reflect on where I wanna go and how far I've come. Those two things usually make me really grateful for the position that I'm currently at. I think the best way to convince a client on a budget increase is to kind of pitch them how much better the video will be. People who aren't into filmmaking tend to think if you get a better camera, it'll look better. But honestly, it's the lighting and us as filmmakers know that. So you just kind of got to relate that message to the client. Like if we get these lights, it will look so much better. And it'll probably do you some good if you give them some examples of music videos that they're trying to achieve a similar look to, or just give them some that you think are dope that are dope because of lighting and then you could be like yo this is fire because of the lighting we should put a little bit more budget on this usually that in itself will help convince them yo it's my boy Valandez. make sure y'all check out Valandez if you don't know him but uh actually you are a fire youtuber bro i actually do enjoy your content a lot but for real my favorite youtuber right now probably gonna throw y'all all the way off is probably ddg i rocks with ddg bro <laughs> DDG got the most simple content. It's entertainment based. It's nothing about filmmaking, but DDG probably one of my favorite filmmakers right now. I think uh, Siobhan Salmon, his content's pretty dope too. Not gonna lie. Probably between those two right now, that's who I'm, I'm enjoying a lot of their stuff. I actually think I'm really bad with consistency. I go through like creative spurts where it's like, yo, let's make stuff, let's make stuff, let's make stuff. And then it might be two to three weeks before I make something else. I think consistency in itself though is really just all about pushing through those moments when you don't wanna do something. Whenever I don't wanna to go to the gym, I gotta make myself go. And it's the same thing with creativity. Usually if you get into the groove of starting, it'll flow smooth from there. So I just, I don't know. I don't wanna say force it, but being self-aware enough to the point where you know that it's your brain telling you not to do this because it's an uncomfortable thing. If there's anything beyond that though, like you need some sleep, you need to, you know, go out and eventually do some other stuff, make sure you do that as well. As far as inspiration though, I get inspired by pretty much everything. Like, I don't really hone in on like individuals, but it's something in pretty much every single individual that inspires me. I can see somebody working out and I'd be like, yo, that's, that's inspiring, I wanna go work out. Or I can see somebody who's really into whatever they're into. They could be really in the garden and it's like, yo, I'm inspired by that. I wanna be that into what I'm doing. So uh, pretty much everybody inspires me, man. I would say go for more 
business oriented clientele. When I was 25, I was thinking about music videos and I was thinking about musicians. And not that musicians aren't good at business, but there are multi-million dollar businesses that need photography and filmmaking. And those weren't what I was pursuing. So if I was strictly thinking about making a profit, I would venture out and try to market my services to multi-million dollar companies or even couples who need weddings. You can get into some job offers that don't require as much work as some of the other things that pay you a lot less. I do think that it's possible to make a living primarily from shooting music videos. If you think about it, me for instance, before I got on YouTube, music videos was all that I did. I had to like supplement a little bit with graphic design, but I was pretty much making it off of music videos. And I do think that it's possible, but I think that it requires a lot more work as opposed to doing something else that is within the exact same realm of filmmaking, but might require you to do a lot less work. Corporate interviews, weddings, that sort of stuff like that will probably pay you a lot more money. You probably have to deal with a lot less BS and it probably would be more enjoyable, honestly. <laughs> but it is possible though. You could definitely do it. It might require you to do more work, but if you love music videos and you see yourself going far with it, Stay consistent with it. Try to build up as much clientele as you can and look for a high ticket clients. Honestly, probably the project that we worked on together. I went down to Texas and I shot a behind the scenes for a music video with Epidemic Sound. And I had a great time doing this because the role that I was playing was so different than what I typically play. Usually on music videos, I'm there directing or I'm doing like gaff work or I'm like helping on set, you know, doing PA stuff. But I was just strictly doing behind the scenes and I actually loved it because I'm just watching the music video as a fly on the wall. I'm able to document what's happening and I actually really love the process of that. I don't know if Epidemic Sound put this out on their channel yet, but, but if so, I'll make sure to link it down in the description for y'all to check it out. Creative dad life is hard. It's really hard. I think it's hard mentally. Um, I think it's hard emotionally because if you think about it, being a husband, being a father, you have to kind of always be emotionally available. And for me personally, I'm not a person that likes to be around people a lot. I like to be by myself. I like to chill in my corner and consume my content and read my book and do all this stuff by myself. But as a dad, you kind of got to be there for kids. Kids always call me your name. Kids always need something. Kids always need advice. I gotta help my son with this, I gotta take him to school, this, that. It's tough, especially when you're focused on your business and you like, dang, why did I have kids? That question right there comes into my mind so often, but it's great though. It really tests you emotionally, it tests you mentally. Uh, it's tough, I think it's really tough. If you don't have kids and you are set on building your business, I would not say, you should have kids. The main thing that I would do differently if I was starting over right now is I would be a lot more objective with what I was doing. Meaning, when I first started out, it was all about creativity. It's like, I wanna do this, this is fun to do, this is where I wanna see myself. And I think that we overly romanticize the word creativity and the creative process. If I was doing this over again, I would have went into this with a straight on business mindset make my money, make as much money as I can, and then after the fact, I'll focus on the creativity and venture off and do the things that I wanted to do and not in that reverse order like I did. So I would get my money right, and then I would go venture off and do the things that I wanted to do. I think the word creativity is like overly romanticized. I think it's cool, but like, it's a lot easier to be creative when you have your funds and your business in order. When you do it the other way around, you're trying to be creative, but you don't got the money. Not having money sucks and it clouds the entire process and makes it not enjoyable. So if I was doing it over again, I would be more objective with my business tactics. My biggest tip is gonna be having fun and also making content that people would wanna see. When I first started YouTube, I was just vlogging. And honestly, nobody wanted to see my life. I live a life just like anybody else. And that just is what it is. But if you think about it objectively from a standpoint of let me make searchable content or let me make content that is relevant to what is happening currently within my niche. I think that you'll have a much better time making the content and also getting the traction from the content. So capitalize on trends that are relevant within your niche. It could be your new camera coming out. It could be a topic coming out. It could be whatever. Just pay attention to what's happening and, and have fun. Some content's not going to give you. It's going to be stuff that people don't want to watch. But if you enjoy making it, make it. 
Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about, just enjoying it. no clue how this turned into a self-portrait vlog but I didn't really want to take pictures of anything else all of the aesthetically pleasing scenes that I found look great with a person or a subject in them and I was the only person there so that's what it was hope y'all like the photos I think I'm gonna close this vlog out right here though hopefully I had enough vlog footage to overlay for my Q&A but I'll figure all that out in the editing process do me a favor though let me know how are y'all structuring this season for the new year what are you doing for your business? What are you doing for your creativity? Let me know down in the comment section because I'm actually really interested to know and y'all could probably give me some inspiration as well. If you enjoyed it, make sure to drop it a like. But with that being said, I'm out y'all. Peace.